prophet is the image that its maker should carve it. Molded image, teacher. Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, welcome for today's uh, presentation. And uh, I'm going to be looking at the subject of the parable of the ten virgins. And uh, uh, basically this first presentation will be showing how history repeats. And uh, before we begin, we are going to start with a silent one of prayer. Okay, so uh, as we've just said that we are going to look at the parable of the ten virgins. And uh, I'm going to show basically from this first presentation how history is going to repeat. And therefore, to start off, we are going to look at uh, the principle that indeed there is no new thing under the sun. And therefore, we shall begin by reading Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 9. Uh, which says that, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything thereof, it may be said, See, this is new, it has been already of all time, which was before us. So, so uh, from Ecclesiastes chapter 1 uh, verses 9 and 10 a principle is clearly laid that there is no new thing under the sun. So whatever things that we are seeing or we are trying to lay out under the third angel means that the they had already been. Now let's also see from uh, Isaiah chapter 46 verses 9 and 10 and even explore more about the character of God. It says that remember the, the former things of old for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me declaring the end from beginning and from the ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure Bado nikisema, shauri langu litasimama, nami nitatenda mapenzi yangu yote. Uh, therefore, from Isaiah, Kwa hivyo kutukana na kitabu cha Isaiah, it gives us a, a further principle about uh, that there is no new thing under the sun. Ina tupea kanuni zaidi ya kuwa, kuna kujambo jipe chini ya jua. And Isaiah, as all prophets are subject to one spirit, na kwa hivyo kwa kuwa wa ma, manabi wote ni wanaroho moja, tells us that, uh, we should remember the things of old. And uh, since 
Already Solomon told us that there is no new thing under the sun. Solomon That means therefore we should remember those old things. Because God declares the end from the beginning. Yes, and uh, we are going to read uh, this first quote from 3SM, page 338, paragraph 1, which uh, continue to lay on uh, upon this principle that it will, it will be very important for us to understand before even we lay this uh, understanding at the end of the world. And uh, it reads that never are we absent from the mind of God. God is our joy and our salvation. Each of the ancient prophets spoke less for their own time than for ours, so that their prophesying is in force for us. And uh, she quotes uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 11, which says that, Now all these things happen unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Uh, so, uh, from... 3SM, Sister White says that each of the ancient prophets spoke less for their own uh, time than for ours. So, so that their prophesying is in force for us. So that gives us, that also even continue to build upon this principle that Indeed, there is no new thing under the sun. And if therefore we wish to learn about the things that we should be understanding at the present, we only need to ask those prophets who spoke there then. Moving on to the next quote, or maybe we, we can... Uh, First, uh, complete that quote which says that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into so also here Peter is uh, in agreement with whatever uh, Paul already says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. Tuona kuwa hapa hivi katika kitabu cha Petero wa kwanza, Peter anajaribu kunganisha yale ambayo Paulo alikuwa asha sema katika kitabu cha Corinto wa kwanza. That all the things these prophets uh, talked about during their time. Ya kuwa yote ambayo haya manabi watu walikuwa nange wakati wao. They actually spoke to us at the end of the world. In the next quote, we read uh, in a Christian Experience and Teachings, page 204, paragraph 1, which says that in reviewing our past history, having traveled over every step of advance in our present standing, I can say praise God. So Sister White here says that as she reviews uh, the past uh, histories, she is certain that whatever she is standing, that uh, indeed, Having traveled over those steps of advance in our present standing, uh, her faith even is strengthened because uh, she is uh, in a state of actually she understands the past and with the principle that God never changes. She understands what uh, she's about to go through. And uh, reading the bold, uh, it says that we have nothing to fear for the future. 
ugusoni except as we shall forget the way the lord has led us iwapo tutasahau jinsi ambavyo mungu amekuwa kituongoza in our past history kwa historia yetu ya kale so it is key to note that ni jambo la maana kujua kuwa If only we forget the things or uh, if we forget how the Lord has led us in the past. We really have something to fear. Because it's only that if we are established in the things of the past. Then we are certain and we shall not fear anything. Yeah so uh, I hope uh, already we can have in mind that principle that all the transactions of the past is is going to be repeated at the end of the world and uh, Having said that uh, we are going to study about the parable of the 10 virgins. And if therefore all things is going to be repeated. Which is written in this Bible. We should also see the parable of the 10 virgins fulfilling in the past. And shall be exactly fulfilled in the same way it was fulfilled in the past. So let's go straight away to the parable of the 10 virgins. Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13. Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13. Ainasema nipo ufalme wa mbinguni utafanana na wanawali wanawali kumi walitoa taa zao wakatoka kwenda kumlaki bwana harusi watano wao walikuwa wapumbavu na watano wenye busara wale waliokuwa wapumbavu walizitoa taa zao wasitoe na mafuta pamoja nao bali bali wale wa, wa, wale wenye busara walitoa mafuta katika vyombo vyao pamoja na taa zao hata bwana harusi alipokawia wote wakasinzia waka wakalala usingizi lakini usiku wa manane usiku wa, ma, wa manane pakawa na kelele haya bwana harusi tokeni muende kumlaki mara wakaondoka wanawali wale wote wakazitengeneza taa zao wale wapumbavu waka wakaambia wenye busara tupeni mafuta yenu kidogo maana taa zetu zina zime zina zimika lakini wale wenye busara waka wakawajibu wakasema sivyo hayatu hayata tutosha sisi na, na, na nini afadhali shikeni njia muende kwa wauzao mkajinunulie na na hao walio walipokuwa wakienda kununua bwana harusi akaja nao waka wali, waliokuwa tayari wakaingia pamoja naye harusini mlango ukafungwa halafu waka you can stop there Asa. So in the parable of the 10 virgins uh, there are some specifications that are rightly placed for us which we shall be looking into in in our studies and before that I'm going we are going to read from uh, review and heralds august 19 1890 paragraph 3 na kabla ya hayo tunataka kusoma katika kitabu cha roho ya nabii alichosema uh where sister white says that i am often referred to the parable of the 10 virgins five of whom were wise and five foolish this parable has been and will be fulfilled to the very letter for it has a special application to this time and like the third angel's message has been fulfilled and will continue to be present through till the close of time so uh, sister uh, here tells us that this parable has been fulfilled and will be fulfilled to the very later and she, she actually says that Uh, like the third angel's message has been fulfilled na anasema kuwa jinsi ambavyo malaika watatu umetimika also this parable will be fulfilled vile vile mfano huu na wali wa 10 utatimika and uh, i don't have the quote here but there is a place where sister white says that we should uh, clearly study those specifications 
that the parable lays out. Ah, uh, sina hiyo nilikuwa ambayo inasema kuwa dada wetu anasema yatupasa tusome hiyo ambayo imetiwa mkazo. Uh, and also we should note that the time when Ellen White is writing this quote it yetu, was even after the experience of the Millerites. Ah, uh, yatupasa tujue kuwa wakati dada wetu anapoandika hii niku ilikuwa baada ya hao kupitia huo huo uh, jaribio jaribio and therefore with the principle that history needs to repeat the white here says that ah uh, kwa kutumia kanuni dada wetu anasema kuwa hapa kuwa this parable fulfilled at the past during the millerite history dada wetu anasema kuwa mfano huu wa nawali 10 ulitimika wakati wa wanawana millerite and she points us forward that it will be fulfilled also to the very later. And we ask ourselves, who are these people who are going to repeat this parable at the end of the world? And in Great Controversy, page 393, paragraph 2, says that the parable of the ten virgins of Matthew 25 also illustrates the experience of the Adventist people. Inasema kuwa mfano wa nawali 10 katika kitabu cha Mathayo 5 inaelezea kuhusu wa Adventist. So this parable sister White says that though it was fulfilled in the Millerite history. Dada uh, tunasema kuwa iwapo Mfano wa nawali 10 ilijirudia katika historia wana, ya wale wa, wa, wa right? She tells us that it's going to be uh, to be repeated in the time of the Advent people. Anatueleza kuwa itenda kujirudia wakati wa Adventist. And she goes on to say that here is brought to view the church living in the last days. Anasema kuwa hii inaonyesha kuwa uh, inaonyesha historia wale ambao wanaishi katika historia ya kanisa ya mwisho. And that, who is the who is this a uh, church which lives at the end of the world. Na ni kanisa gani ambayo ina inaonyesha wanaoishi katika hali ya dunia mwisho hali ya mwisho ya dunia? Is there advent people? Ni wa adventist. Those who are waiting upon the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wale ambao wanatazamia ujio wa Yesu Kristo kwa mara ya pili. Now and uh, the parable of the 10 virgins. Kwa hivyo mfano wa nawali wa 10 as a uh, we understand that the Millerite history was the history of the first and the second angels' messages. The first and the second angels' messages. And uh, also that history, as we understand, is the history of the, the seven thunders. So we understand that the history of the Millerites. Is also the history of the first and second angel, and also uh, Sister White clearly says that the, the seven thunders was a delineation of events that transpired under the first and the second angel. So also this history was the history of the seven thunders. <laughs> Uh, yes, so uh, that also uh, perfectly links the parable of the ten virgins and the seven thunders. So that means that the history of this parable fulfilled during the time of the seven thunders. So in mind, uh, keep this in mind that as we are going to see how the parable of the ten virgins fulfilled during the Millerite history, we are going actually to see in light of the first and the second angel's messages. Uh, yet, yet, 
jionyesha katika zile ngurumo saba iliweza kutumika katika historia ya wana millerites. Now to confirm this we are going to read this next quote. Ah uh, kudhibitisha haya tunaenda kusoma katika nuku inayofuata. 16 MR uh, 267 paragraph 1 and 2. And uh, Sister White here actually quotes, or in brackets, she quotes uh, the parable of the ten virgins, that is Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. Dada White hapu hivi ananuku ile kitabu cha Matayo 25, moja hadi kuminatatu. And she says that a special message has come to our world in the messages of the first and the second angels. Mm, uh, yes, you can read this. A special message has come to our world in the messages of the first and the second angels. And uh, she quotes Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 8, which is the first and the second angels. Under the proclamation of these messages, the midnight cry was made, and the believers in the messages were compelled to go out from the churches because they preached the second appearing of Christ in the clouds of heaven. The whole world was to hear the message, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Here is the parable of the ten virgins. So, uh, it, it actually, uh, this quote here gives uh, more clarity on the fact that the parable of the ten virgins was fulfilled in the time of the first and the and the second angels. And kui ya paivi nazi inazidi kuonyesha kuwa jinsi ambago mfano wa nawali wa kumi ilitimika katika a history ya amaleko wa kwanza na amaleko wa pili. Yes, because she says that uh, under the proclamation of these messages, which is the first and the second angel. And I'm saying that we're chini ya um message message message. Ujumbe. Uh, chini ya ujumbe hii wa malika wa kwanza na pili wa ujumbe wa malika wa ujumbe wa mfalo wa nawali wa kumi ndipo uh, mfalo wa uh, malika wa kwanza na pili ulibiriwa and uh, I want also to for us to confirm that indeed the history of the first and the second angel is the history of the seven thunders na tunataka kudhihirisha kuwa historia malika wa kwanza na pili ni historia zile ngurumo saba and in one MR page 100 it says that the special light given to John, which was expressed in the seven thunders, was a delineation of events which would transpire under the first and the second angel's messages. Anasema kuwa, aile nuru ambaye Yohana alipata kuhusu zile ngurumo saba, ilikuwa inaonyesha zile tukio zinazo enenda kwa historia ya malaika wa kwanza na malaika wa pili. So, from... After laying that in place, let's now go back to the parable and see how this uh, parable was fulfilled under the first and the second angel's message. <laughs> it says, the first uh, verse says that, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Aya kwanza inasema ndipo ufalme wa mbinguni utakapofanana na wanawali kumi, waliotoa taa zao wakatoa wakatoka kuenda kumlaki bwana harusi. So uh, from this verse we get that kutokana na time kutokana na fungu hit inatueleza kuwa kutakuwa na wakati kulikuwa na wakati that the, uh, the ten virgins ambapo wale wanawali wa kumi uh, began to go forth wali walianza ku wali walitoka kwenda kumlaki kwa harusi so they are going forth uh, um, jambo la kwanza ni kulikuwa na kuonoka yes because it says that then shall the kingdom of god uh, of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And uh, we're going to confirm that the period when the, the ten virgins went forth is the time that the first angel's message is confirmed. Ndipo sa apo ndipo wakati uju, um, 
malaiko wa kwanza anaweza kudhihirisha kuwa ni ukweli because we say that this parable is fulfilling under the first and the second angels message kwa kwa tumesema mfano huu ana wali wa 10 inajidhihirisha chini ya uh, malaiko wa kwanza na malaiko wa pili peke yake and uh, we read from great controversy page 393 paragraph 4 and tunaona kuna katika kitabu cha pambano ku which says that the coming of christ as announced by the first angels message was understood to be represented by the coming of the bridegroom the widespread reformation under the pro- the proclamation of his coming answered to the going forth of the virgins so uh, sister white says that the first angel's message was understood uh, to be represented by the coming of the bridegroom and uh, she marks that the widespread proclamation or reformation under the proclamation of his coming na naeleza kuwa ule uenea ule uenewaji wa neno chini ya ilivyoelezea bwana harusi anakuja answered to the going forth of the virgins ilijibu kuondoka kwa wanawali but she doesn't tell us when is this but we're going to read from the next quote lakini atuelezee ni ni wakati gani lakini tunataka kusema katika ni kwa inayo fuata where she's she's confirming where exactly the there was a widespread reformation under the proclamation of his coming ambapo anadhibitisha ni wakati gani ambapo kulikuwa na huo kuenda kwa wanawali wa 10 so uh, it reads that the advent movement of 1840 to 1844 was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. The first angel's message was carried to every missionary in the missionary station in the world. Uh, she says that under the advent movement of 1840 to 1844. Uh, kuwa katika ule mwaka wa wa 1840 to 1844 ya Adventista. She says that uh, It was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. Kulikuwa na uenea mkubwa wa wa uwezo wa Mungu ama nguvu za Mungu. And she says the first angel's message was carried to every missionary station. Na anasema kuwa ule ujumbe wa malaika wa kwanza ulienea katika kila missionary. And uh, in this also this next uh, quote she says that Katika hii nikuu inayofuata anasema kuwa the message of revelation 14 ujumbe wa wa ufunuo 14 proclaiming the hour of god's judgment is come inaonyesha ambayo inatabiri ujio wa judgment hukumu wa bwana yesu unakuja is given in the time of the end ina 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 peano wakati wa mwisho and the angel of revelation 10 is represented as having one foot on the sea and one foot on the land na ule malaika wa wa ufunuo wa yohana 10 ana anawakilishwa kuwa na mguu mmoja kwenye bahari na mguu mmoja kwenye ardhi and she says that showing that the message will be carried to distant lands akio akisema kuwa ujumbe utaenea katika uh, mahali tofauti tofauti so uh, sister Wade here gives us a description that when the first angel's message is uh, is confirmed Dadoi hapa anasema kuwa wakati ujumbe wa malaika wa kwanza unadhibitishwa kuwa kweli or when the angel of revelation 10 uh, comes down ama wakati ambapo um, malaika wa, wa ufunuo 10 anakuja uh, the message will be carried to every distant lands ujumbe utaenea mahali pengi na ulimwenguni and in the previous quote we read that when the first angel's message Uh, is confirmed there is a widespread reformation na kwa nuku ile tuliyosoma hapo awali kuwa wakati ujumbe wa malaika wa kwanza unadhibitishwa kuwa kweli ujumbe unaenea mahali pengi and uh, i think brother calvin yesterday mentioned uh, the time when the angel of revelation 10 came down na nadhani natumaini kwa brother ndugu calvin alieleza kuelezea wakati ambapo ujumbe wa ufunuo 10 anawasili ulimwenguni so uh, this in the millerite history This uh, appointment is marked at August 11. Kwa hivyo katika historia wa Millerites, hii ina 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 ni wakati wa August 11. This was August 11, 1840 when the principle of the day or the day year principle was confirmed by the 
this prophecy that has been prophesied and it was fulfilled right exactly at the same day. Ah, hii ilikuwa ile kanuni ya siku kuwakilisha mwaka ilithibitishwa kuwa kweli huu mwaka wa Agosti 11 mwaka 1844. And this is the point also where the first angel's message was confirmed to be true. Na hii ilikuwa pale ambapo ujumbe wa malaika wa kwanza ulithibitishwa kuwa kweli which I read one scene to represent first confirmed. Ambayo nitandika one scene kwa kilisha imewasili. And we are told Ime, that imekuwa, at this point na tunabewa kwa katika wakati huo is when the the, the virgins are uh, represented as going forth to meet the bridegroom. Tunambiwa katika wakati huo ni imewakilishwa pale ambapo wale wanawali wanaondoka kumlaki bwana harusi. So I hope already we can see the link that it's made uh, with this parable telling us how the messages of the already the first angel is linked uh, to the going forth of the virgin. Na tumai kutokana na hii hii mfano wa nawali wa kumi imeweza kudhibitishwa na ujumbe wa malaika wa kwanza pale ambapo malaika au wanawali wanaondoka so uh, in this next quote katika nuku inayofuata uh, sister white is going uh, it is in reference to the angel of revelation 10 ina inafananishwa na ufunuo na kitabu cha ufunuo wa ufunuo wa Yohana 10 and in early, it is early writings page 245 paragraph 2 which says that Jesus commissioned a mighty angel yesterday we were studying about uh, some angel who is this mighty angel jana tulikuwa tunasoma kuhusu wale malaika ni nani huyu malaika mkuu who did we, who is the mighty angel nani malaika mkuu The angel of Revelation 18. Yule malaika wa ufunuo wa Yohana 18. But in this uh, in early writings page 245 paragraph 2. Katika nukuu hiyo Stewart is talking about the angel of Revelation 10. Ah uh, dada wetu anaongelea kuhusu uh, malaika wa ufunuo 10. And uh, she goes on to say Jesus commissioned a mighty angel to descend and warn the inhabitants of the earth to prepare for his uh, second appearing. As the angel left the presence of Jesus in heaven, an exceeding bright light and glorious light went before him. I was told that his mission was to lighten the earth, uh, sorry, was to uh, lighten the earth with his glory and one man of the coming wrath of God. Multitudes received the light. So she gives a description that when this angel uh, descended an exceeding bright light and glorious light went before him. Adado ita nasema kuwa kulikuwa na mwanga kuu na na mwanga kuu ulioenda mbele 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 yake. So we see here that this angel of Revelation 10 is actually uh, typifying also the angel of Revelation 18. Tuona kuwa huyu malaika wa ufunuo 10 anasawazi anasawazishwa na malaika wa ufunuo 18. Okay, so let's read the, the next quote. Tume nuku nyingine says that when the ten virgins went forth to meet the bridegroom, their lamps were trimmed and burning. Five of these virgins were wise. They anticipated delay and filled their flagons with oil, prepared for an emergency. From those flagons their lamps were supplied and not left to go off. But five of their number had not the, uh, this foresight. They made no provision for disappointment or delay. So uh, the parable of the ten virgins, after this, uh, virgins went forth. Uh baada ya hao wanawali wa kumi walipoondoka we are brought to the point where uh, they meet a, a disappointment uh, tunaletwa katika wakati ambapo wanapata masikitiko where the, the bridegroom tarries pale ambapo um, bwana harusi anakawia they expect the bridegroom to come but he tarries walikuwa wanatarajia bwana harusi kuja lakini bwana harusi anakawia kuikuja and uh, sister white here says that When these virgins went forth at this period. Na dada wote anasema kwa pale ambapo wale wanawali waliondoka katika huo huo hatua. Their lamps were trimmed and burning. Taa zao zilikuwa na moto na zilikuwa zinawaka. But then we have five of them who never made the preparation for a delay or a tardy. Na kwa hivyo kulao wale ambao hawakuwa wametengeneza hawakuwa na taa kwenye mafuta zao ili 
iwatayarishe kwa ile wakati wa kukawia so we read uh, the next uh, verses 5 tusoma katika aya ya 5 and uh, before that so we see that Matthew 25 verses 1 to 4 is rightly fulfilled at this period na tunaona kuwa matayo matayo 25 moja hadi 5 inadhihirishwa a wakati huo and we will see that at this point verses 5 is going to be fulfilled samahani a Matayo 25 moja hadi 4 inadhihirishwa wakati huo na aya ya 5 inaonyeshwa katika hatua hiyo that as the break room time they they all slumbered and slept and there is a group that had not made a preparation for that event now bwana rusa ilipokawia kuja walilala na kusinzia na kuna ambao hawako mejitengeneza au hawako mtarisha taa zao kwa huo kukawia kwa bwana rusi so let's confirm this thought in this history and see how it was fulfilled acha tudhihirishe mambo haya na katika historia hiyo a uh, great controversy 394 paragraph 1 it says that while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept by the tarrying of the bridegroom is represented the passing of the time when the lord was expected the disappointment and the seeming delay so uh, the tarrying time that is spoken of in verses 5 ule kukawia kwa kuja kwa bwana harusi ambaye imezungumzwa katika aya ya 5 Uh, we are told that tumeambiwa kuwa is represented by the passing of the time when they expected their lord to come ah uh, inaonyesha kuwa ni ilionyesha wakati ambao ulipita wana walipokuwa wanatarajia bwana harusi kuja and therefore they made a disappointment and there was a seeming delay na kwa hivyo walikuwa na huo masikitiko na kulikuwa na huo Uh, hali ya kuchelewa so when was this disappointment or ni, this seeming delay ni wakati gani coming? kulikuwa na huo uh, masikitiko na ama kukawia kwa kuja kwa bwana harusi and uh, remember also we are going to try and see uh, which angel's message was fulfilled at that period because we are studying this parable in the light of the first or in the angels messages na tunaenda huko tunazungumzia kuhusu hawa malaika wa kwanza na pili tunataka kuangalia ni wakati gani ambapo malaika ni, ni katika hatua hii ni malaika yupi alikuwa na ana anadhibitishwa and i want, i want us to re- remember this principle na nataka tukumbuke hii kanuni that always when an angel arrives uh, ya kuwa pale popote ambapo malaika anawasili he is never understood haileweki right there haileweki hapo hapo therefore there is always an increase of knowledge kwa hivyo unapaswa kuwa na ku kuongezeka kwa maarifa and uh, a message is always raised who in, who is going to give or first bring that message na kutakuwa na yule mjumbe ambaye anaenda kueneza huu ujumbe and after a period na. that message is going to be confirmed to be true na baada ya muda fulani huo ujumbe anaenda kudhibitisha kuwa kweli and uh, when this angel is being confirmed na wakati uh, malaika wanadhibitisha kuwa kweli it's always another angel who comes down to confirm the message of that angel ni malaika mwingine anayekuja kudhibitisha kuwa huyu malaika ni wa kweli so uh, if the first angel is confirmed at this period Iwako, we, we understand that ai wako malaika wa kwanza anadhibitisha katika wakati huo tunaelewa kuwa it is at this period also that the second angel uh, comes down to confirm this angel ni katika tunaelewa kuwa ni malaika wa pili anayekuja kumdhibitisha kwa huyu malaika wa kwanza ni wa kweli okay so let's continue tuendelee uh, we want to confirm when this uh, virgins were met a disappointment during to the the seeming delay of their lord tunataka kuonyesha jinsi ambavyo hawa wanawali walikuwa na huo masikitiko wakati bwana harusi alipokawia so we read early writings page 247 paragraph 1 tusoma katika roho ya unabii says that another mighty angel was commissioned to descend to earth jesus placed in his hand a writing and he came to the earth he cried babylon is fallen is fallen Then I saw the disappointed ones again rise their eyes to heaven looking with faith and hope for their lords uh, appearing. 
but many seem to remain in a stupid state, as if asleep, yet I could see their trace of deep sorrow upon their countenances. The disappointed ones saw from the scriptures that they were in a tiring time, and that they must patiently wait the fulfillment of the vision. The same evidence which led to the, them to look for their Lord in 1843 led them to expect him in 1844. So Sister White says here that uh, she sees another angel who descend to the earth having a, a writing in his hand. And uh, the, he, he was crying Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Which angel is this? The second angel. So we see, uh, and uh, in the bold, she says that the disappointed ones saw from the scriptures that they were in the tiring time. So at this point where the, the second angel is confirmed, where he cries that Babylon is fallen, is fallen. It is understood also to be the tiring time. The period where they met that disappointment, they were expecting their Lord to come, but there was a seeming delay. And in the Millerite history, this was April 1984. Where they, where they made their first disappointment. Uh, okay. <coughs> So let's read the, the last part of that quote. She says that they saw many who bore the name of Christians turn with scorn and derision upon those who had been disappointed. As the words fell from mocking lips, you have not gone up yet, an angel wrote them. Said the angel, they mocked God. So at this period when this uh, faithful one met a disappointment, it is marked also a point where you will meet a derision from even those brethren you are together. You will be mocked because there is that disappointment. A delay. Utakejeliwa kwa kuwa uh, ulikuwa unatarajia lakini wanarusi ya kuja. So remember that when we started we put forth a principle that there is no new thing under the sun and this is exactly the things we should expect at the end of the world. Kumbuka pale awali tulisema kuwa kuna jambo jipi ya chini ya jua na vile vile hii ndio ambayo tunatarajia kupata katika mwisho wa dunia. But if we trust in God we are sure to overcome this. Na iwapo tutamwamini tu Mungu tuta because Ellen White says that as they were mocking these uh, faithful ones, they were actually mocking God. Now the next uh, uh, quote says that as the churches refused to receive the first angel's message, they rejected the light uh, from heaven and fell from the favor of God. Uh, she says that as the first angel message was confirmed already at this period. Those who rejected these messages, yeah, which fell from heaven, uh, she says that they fell from the favor of God. And as she says, they trusted to their own strength. And by opposing the first message, placed themselves where they could not see the light of the second angel's message. They trusted to their own strength. And by, uh, by opposing this first angel's message, they could not see the light of the second angel. So it's clear that when you reject the first angel, you can never be benefited by the second angel. 
na 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 uwezi faidika na mjumbe malaika wa pili because when this message comes you will be ready to receive that message kwa kwa ujumbe huu unapowasili utakuwa tayari kuikataa because you never gathered the oil that was necessary for this point kwa kuwa haukuwa umeweka mafuta yenye ilikuwa inahitajika wakati huo So uh, she says and by opposing the first angel's message placed up, uh, themselves where they could not see the light of the second angel's message but the beloved of God who were oppressed accept, uh, accepted the message Babylon is fallen and left the churches so at this point when this faithful one received this message ah uh, wakati huo ambapo wale waminifu walipata huo mwanga wa ujumbe huo That Babylon is fallen they have rejected the first angel. Yakuwa Babeli umeanguka umekataa ujumbe malaika wa kwanza. They all left those fallen churches. Wote walitoka katika hizo makanisa zilizoanguka. Okay so we are going also to prove that it is at this point. Tunaenda kuonyesha pia ni katika wakati huo. At this uh, turning time. Wakati wa kukawia au kungoja. When the second angel message is confirmed to be true. Pale ambapo malaika wa pili anadhibitisha kuwa kweli. Babylon is fallen. Babylon Babeli umeanguka. Is also the place where we mark the first temple cleansing. Ni pale ambapo tuna 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 tuonesha kuwa ni kutakasa kwa hekalu kwa mara ya kwanza. And uh, we're going to read from Review and Heralds December 6, 1892 which says that When Jesus began his public ministry, he cleansed the temple from its sacrilegious profanation. Among the last acts of his ministry was the second temple, uh, second cleansing of the temple. So, in the last work for the warning of the world, so sister right here uh, parallels the work of uh, the two temple cleansing in the history of Christ. Akutakasa kwa hekali kwa mara ya kwanza na pili na with that last warning message that will be given to the world na ule onyo wa mwisho ambao itapeana katika mwisho wa dunia and it, she says that two distinct calls are made to the churches na anasema kuwa kutakuwa na zile wito mbili zitakazofanywa katika kanisa the second angel's message is ujumba malaika wa pili ni babylon is fallen is fallen babeli umeanguka umeanguka that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication ule mji mkuu ambao umefanya watu kunywa ule divai yake na kutenda fornication fornication usinifu. Uh, kufanya usinifu na makanisa so uh, here we, we see there are two temple cleansings hapa hivi tunaona kuko na kutakasa kwa hekalu mara mbili and she links this to temple cleansing to two distinct calls uh, that are going to be given as the last one to the end of, in the end of the world na anazisawazisha na hizo wito mbili ambayo inaenda kupeana mwisho wa dunia and this first call is Babylon is fallen is fallen. Na hiyo wito wa kwanza ni Babeli umeanguka umeanguka. And this is also exactly this period where this angel was given. Na huu ndio hapo hivi ndio wakati ambapo huyo malaika anapeana. So this is also the period where the first temple cleansing which is a separation from those who rejected this message of the first or those who never made a preparation for this period. Na hii ndio wakati ambapo kutakuwa na zile kundi mbili kwa wale ambao hawako umetengeneza au kukuwa na mafuta kwa wakati huo wa kukawia. I will continue to remind you that keep in mind that this history is a history that is going to repeat at the end of the world. Nitazidi kuelezea kuwa historia hii inaenda kujirudia hapo mwisho wa dunia. Because Sister White told us that unless we forget the past. Na dada yetu anatuambia kuwa iwapo tutasahau ya kale Indeed we have something to fear. Tu kwa kweli tuna jambo la kuogopa. So having established that this is the period where the second angel's message is confirmed. Tukishaweka tumeshaweka msingi kuwa hapa ndipo wakati wa malaika wa pili anadhibitishwa kuwa kweli. Where the bridegroom tarries. Pale ambapo bwana harusi anakawia. Uh, also marking a uh, temple cleansing. Inaonesha pia kutakasa kwa hekalu mara ya kwanza. Where the angel of revelation chapter 14 verses 8 is confirmed or Babylon is fallen is Pale ambapo ujumba wa ufunuo 11 14 inadhibitisha kuwa Babeli umeanguka umeanguka So we move on to the next uh, specification in the parable Tukienda katika 
jambo lingine ambalo limetiwa mkazo in verse 6 it says that katika aya ya 6 inasema kuwa and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh going out to meet him inasema lakini usiku wa manane pakawa na kelele haya bwana harusi bwana harusi tokeni muende kumlaki so there is a period after uh, this starting time kwa hivyo kuna wakati baada ya huo kukawia the virgins were uh, disappointed wale wanawali walikuwa na masikitiko because uh, the, the, the lord whom they expected didn't come at that period they, they looked forward to kwa kuwa bwana harusi alikawia kuja ule wakati ambao walikuwa wametarajia but uh, she says that uh, the bible says that at midnight there was a cry made that behold the bridegroom cometh vile nasema kuwa lakini usiku wa manane pakawa na kelele haya bwana harusi tokeni muende kumlaki so this therefore tells us that there is a period after this uh, turning time ah uh, inatueleza kuwa uh, baada ya huku kukawia that the midnight cry message is given utakuwa na ule kilio usiku wa manane ambao utapeana behold the bridegroom cometh sema tazama bwana harusi meaning therefore that indeed the lord is about to come inaonesha kuwa kwa kweli bwana harusi anakuja so in the millerite history was this thing fulfilled ah uh, katika historia wana mila uh, wana mila hii ilithibitishwa and we are going to read from great controversy page 400 paragraph 1 tusoma katika kitabu cha mapambano says that in the parable of Matthew 25 the time of waiting and slumber the time of waiting and slumber is followed by the coming of the bridegroom because the bible says that behold the bridegroom cometh this was in accordance with the arguments just presented both from prophecy and from the types oh. this was in accordance Hii sawia. with the arguments just presented Na ile ume, ume from both uh, prophecy and from the types Kwa unabi na aina. so also this give us a, a, a very important thing that also the millerite also uh, used what the types aina tupea jambo la msingi ambayo inapaswa tuangalie kuwa wana mila rights walitumia aina and uh, for us also at the end of the world we should remember that indeed if history is repeating we are go, we, we are to remember those former things of old na hapo sisi tunao tunaishi katika hizi nyakati za mwisho yatupasa pia tuangalie haya mambo ya kale the ya, ya mambo ya kale so uh, it goes on to say they carried strong conviction uh, to their truthfulness and the midnight cry was heralded by thousands of believers awaliana na hiyo kweli na wengi wao ukweli wa kilio cha usiku wa manane na wengi wao walienea walieneza ukweli huu remember we had said that at this period there was a separation or a temple cleansing na tumeeleza kuwa katika wakati huo kulikuwa na kundi mawili na na kutakasa kwa hekali and therefore the people here were so weary and disappointed na watu walikuwa wamesikitika sana but when this midnight cry message is given na pale ambapo ujumbe ujumbe wa usiku wa manane umepeanwa we are told that uh, it is heralded by thousands of believers tumeambiwa kuwa ni watu wengi waliweza kuenea kueneza ujumbe huu uh, let's read the next quote which says near the close of the second angel's message oh and near the close of the second angel's message i saw a great light from heaven shining upon the people of god the rays of light seemed bright as the sun and i heard the voices of angels crying behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him so she says that uh, towards the end of or the close of the second angel's message anasema kuwa pale ambapo juma malaika pili ilikuwa kama unataka kufungwa ama kukamilika and uh, maybe i should mention that when uh, when okay
Okay, so I want to show a principle that when uh, when an angel arrives, we, we already mentioned that it's not understood. At some point, it's preached, and at some point, it's going to be confirmed. And uh, when at this point, when the third angel uh, arrives, we know also there is a point where it's preached, and uh, it's also going to be confirmed. And I want to show that it's all this uh, period up until the when the third angel is confirmed is the history of the second angel. So we are told that from that put that near the close of the second angel. Okay. Yeah, near the close of the second angel. A message is given that behold the bridegroom comes. And uh, says that behold the bridegroom cometh going out to meet him. And she says that this was the midnight cry. So, near the close of the second angel. At this point, because we see that the second angel is confirmed here, uh, and by the third angel, uh, near the close of this history of the second angel, uh, so uh, the angel who comes to confirm the second angel is the third angel. And at some point, this angel is going to be preached. And it's going to be confirmed at some latter point. But it says that near the close of the second angel, a message is given. Behold the bridegroom coming. And this is the midnight cry. And it uh, goes on to read. Angels were sent from heaven to arouse the discouraged saints and prepare them for the great work before them. In every part of the land, light was given upon the second angel's message, and the cry melted the hearts of thousands. It went uh, from city to city and from village to village until uh, the wait sorry until the waiting people of God were fully aroused. In many churches, the message was not permitted to be given, and a large company who had the living testimony left these fallen churches. And the midnight. Uh, a mighty work was accomplished by the midnight cry. The message was heart searching, leading the believers to seek a living experience for themselves. They knew that they could not lean upon one another. So at this period, when the midnight cry is given, we are told that those who have a living testimony, uh, at least when this call is made, all left those fallen churches. And uh, we are told that the message was a heart searching. Message. Leaving many believers to seek for that living testimony. That so, uh, <clears throat> let's read the, this last quote to confirm that midnight cry. Angels were sent to aid the mighty angel from heaven, and I heard voices which seemed to sound everywhere. Come out of her, my people, that ye not, uh, be not partakers of her sins, and ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. This message seemed to be an addition to the third angel's uh, message. 
joining it as the midnight cry joined the second angel's message in 1844. The glory of God rested upon the patient waiting saints and they fearlessly gave the last solemn warning proclaiming the fall of Babylon and calling upon God's people to come out of her that they might escape her fearful doom. So we are told that at the midnight cry message it is the point where the last warning is given to come out of those fallen churches. And she says that this is parallel to the message of uh, the third end, which says that come out of my people that ye be not partakers of our sins. That he received not of our place. So uh, the middle prayer message in uh, the Millerite history was given in August 15. August 15, 1844. And uh, we can continue to see how this parable indeed was fulfilled in that history. So keep in mind that this thing is going to be repeated and there is a point where the world is going to be given the last one for the plagues for so, so all those people who will not receive this message are among those people who are going to be claimed at this period Watakuwa miongoni ya watu ambao watenda ku ambao watapata ule mapigo saba ambao watapata zile mapigo saba Okay so let's go to the uh, last specification that is in Matthew chapter 25 verses 10 Kile katika hizo description ambazo zimesemwa which says that and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they and they that were ready went in with him uh, Sorry, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Ah, in a sema, now wali poko akienda kununua bwana arusi akaja. Now wali wali yokuwa tayari wakaingia pamoja na arusi ni mlango ukafungwa. This is verse seven. I yoni aya sita. Let's read verse seven first before we make that point. So me aya saba kabla tu jetengeneza hiyo. So. It says, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps at this period. When this midnight cry is given, uh, it says that then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. So at this point of the midnight cry, the foolish virgins are seen uh, inquiring for the oil from the wise. But notice what the wise says. But the wise answer said, Not so, that there be not enough for us and you. But for ye, rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. So we're going to see clearly also that it is a midnight cry where the, the uh, the character of this wise and foolish is going to be revealed. Because they never made a preparation or gathered the oil ready for this period. And when they went to, to buy the oil, we are told that the bridegroom came and all those who already went in uh, to the marriage. 
waliondoka kwenda kununua ma mafuta na bwana harusi alikuja na mlango ukafungwa so let's read from uh, 1 sm 62 tume katika roho ya unabii which says that i was shown in vision and i i still believe that there was a shadow in 1844 all who saw the light of the first and second angels messages and rejected that light were left in darkness and those who accepted it and received the holy spirit which attended the proclamation of the message from heaven and who afterward renounced their faith and pronounced their experience a delusion thereby rejected the spirit of god and it's no longer pleaded with them so uh, here we are told that in 1844 which uh, we know it was August, uh, October 22nd 1844 is marked uh, the shadow that all those who rejected the messages of the first and the second angel we are told uh, were left in perfect darkness <laughs> And in the next uh, 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 quote says that I saw that in 1844 God opened a door and no uh, God had opened a door and no man could shut it Those who rejected the light which was brought to the world by the message of the second angel went into darkness and how great was the darkness so we, we saw that this admitted prayer when this last solemn uh, warning message was given but there are those also who uh, rejected this light that was given at this period and we are told that the darkness that these guys went into it was so gross because it's Right here when the door shall be shut and uh, you, you will never see that light again. Ilikuwa giza kuu ambayo mlango ulifungwa na hauwezi wana tena mwango wa mungu. Because we read that the minute cry message here. Na tulisama kuwa katika kilocho siku wa manane. It calls us out of uh, Babylon. Inatuita tutoke babeli. That uh, she says uh, that we that ye be not partakers of our sins and ye receive not of our plagues. So those people who rejected this life that uh, the first and the second angel are uh, typical to those who are going to receive uh, the plagues at this period. When the door shall be shut. So and uh, we started off by saying that uh, history repeats and we, as we close on this uh, presentation uh, we are going just to show that uh, this parable is going to repeat at the end of the world and uh, because sister white uh, already had linked to uh, for us that the experience of uh, the the, the, the virgins when they we saw that it was a the, the, the time period of the first and the second angels message and uh, in this uh, quote sister white says that the theme of greatest importance is the third angel's message embracing the messages of the first and the second angels. Anasema kuwa um jambo la muhimu katika ujumbe wa malaika watatu ni ule uenewaji wa ujumbe wa malaika wa kwanza na malaika wa pili. So and we, we read that uh, as the third angel's message is repeated. So also this parable is going to repeat. And uh, from this uh, quote we, we've read that 
The greatest importance of the third angel's message is uh, that of embracing the messages of the first and the second. Tumesoma kuwa katika nukuu hii jambo la busara ma jambo la muhimu tunapo biri ujumba malika wa tatu ni kurejelea ujumba malika wa kwanza na ujumba malika wa pili. And in this next quote, katika nukuu inayofuata, she says when the third angel's message is preached as it should be. Power attends its proclamation. Tunasema tuna inasema kuwa wakati juma maleka watatu na ubiri wa jinsi ambavyo inapaswa kuwa uwezo una uwezo inakuwa power attends its proclamation. Uwezo una jidhirisha. And as we we've been laying, Brother Mark has been laying out that we have we need to have that. That the angel has to have that power. Ah, dugu dugu makan al alikuwa na tu alikuwa na tuambia kuwa yetu pasa tuwe na uweza mungu huo. Or it shall not have that abiding influence in it. Um, tu spokuwa na yao haita kuwa na muhimu yote ndani yetu. It says that it must be attended with a divine power. Inasema kuwa lazima iwe na uweza uwezo mku. And after Sister Oye talks about the third angel, she brings in the parable of the ten virgins. She says, I am often referred to the parable of the ten virgins, five of whom were wise and foolish, and five foolish. This parable has been fulfilled and will be fulfilled to the very later, for it has a special application for this time. And like the third angel's message has been fulfilled, and continue to be present truth till the close of time. So she says that like the third angel message was fulfilled or has been fulfilled and will continue to be present truth. It's also the same as or likewise to the parable of the ten virgins. Nisawia na ujumbe wa wale wa na wale wa kumi. So so in our next presentations, katika somo tunayo fuata, we are going to see how this parable perfectly fulfills also under the angel of Revelation 18. Tanda kwa na jinsi ambapo mfano huu na wali kumi lijidhirisha katika ujumbe wa ufunuo wa kumi na nane. Because most of our studies will be geared at looking at the binding of. Ah, kukuwa ujumbe yetu mingi nenda kuzungumzia ule ujumbe wa maleko wa kwanza pili na tatu. So we shall see how also this parable fulfills at that period also. Tanda kwa na jinsi ambapo mfano huu na wali wa kumi lijidhirisha wakati huu. Because we we read that it's speaking about the experience of the Advent people. But unsama kwa inongelea wa Adventista. Those who are living at the end of the world. Wale ambao naishi wakati wa mwisho. So with that we're going to close with a prayer. Na kwa hayo nigependa tuombe na tufunge na maono. Our Lord in heaven. Thank you and uh, glory for your name this morning. Thank you for these uh, peaceful hours that you've given us, Lord, to study your word. Because, Lord, we understand that there is a time that it will be even trouble to look into these things. And as you continue to lay out these truths to us, we humbly pray, Lord, that you may help us to comprehend all these truths. And most of all, may we be those who shall practice these truths. Thank you, Lord, for everything that we've done. There is any part that, Lord, we make sure that is not right. We pray that you may forgive us. Bless us now until for a month for we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.